simple. It's very inexpensive, depending on what ingredients you want to add to it. And it's super healthy. So the first thing you're going to need is six cups of old fashioned rolled oats. It's really important that it's the old fashioned kind. This is the name brand, but you can use store brand or Bob's Red Mill or Azure Standard, any kind that you want, just as long as they're old fashioned rolled oats. Super important. All right, so six cups of oats. And I like to put nuts in my granola. So if you're gonna put nuts in your granola, that it needs to go in this first part. Um, and I use one cup of nuts. You can use more if you want. I also um, like to use the ones that are already pre-roasted and salted because the saltiness kind of gives a little balance to the sugar, the sugary taste, the sweet taste. So one cup, you're gonna need one cup of honey. Um, I do not use raw honey in this recipe because we're gonna bake it in the oven so the heat would kill all the, the probiotics and good bacteria that's in the raw honey. So I just use regular honey. And one cup of melted peanut butter. So if you're allergic to peanuts, this could be pecan butter, almond butter, walnut butter, cashew butter. It could be any kind of nut butter you choose. Um, just make sure you melt it. Um, you can melt it in the microwave if you want. It takes about 30 seconds to melt because you want it to be good and runny. Um, to melt about a cup of peanut butter. So the first step is we're going to melt peanut butter. And then the second step is we're going to stir the honey into the peanut butter. And honey's pretty sticky, so you might need a rubber spatula handle, so it makes it a lot easier to hang on to when I'm trying to stir something that's thick. If you'll remember when you were little, you used to like to eat peanut butter and honey sandwiches, and this is basically the same recipe. One cup of peanut butter and one cup of honey, or you could use pancake syrup or Cairo syrup or molasses, black syrup molasses. Um, and then you like to spread on toast or just regular bread. We used to eat that a lot when you were little. All right, now we've got this stirred together really good. We're gonna add our nuts to this bowl. And I'm gonna kind of stir it around a little bit, not too much because we're fixing to do a lot of stirring with this peanut butter. All right. Then this mixture goes into this mixture. Try not to waste too much here. There we go, set that to the side. Now we're just gonna stir all this together and this is gonna take a minute, so. Now that we have all of the peanut butter honey mixture stirred into the, oat, the oatmeal nut mixture, we're going to put it onto a large baking sheet. Now this is a really ugly, disgusting, old baking sheet that I've had for years. And I use it to make granola with. And I put a seal pack in the bottom, a silicone baking mat. Um, just because it makes it easier to clean up and get the last bit of it out. So we're gonna spread this onto the baking sheet and then we'll be ready to go. Okay, 
Let me wash my hands and I'll be right back. Okay, my hands are all clean. So now we have this ready to go into a 350 degree oven. So you're gonna bake this for about 30 minutes and you're gonna stir it at about 10 to 15 minutes in just to kind of keep an eye on it. I would check it again at 20 minutes. You'll know when it's done because it'll be golden brown and it'll be really loose. As you saw when I was putting it onto the baking sheet, it sticks together, but as it bakes, um, it will become loose and cereal-like. That's a good way to describe it. All right, I'm gonna put this in the oven and we'll be back. Okay, so we just pulled our granola from the oven. It's nice and hot. So, like I was saying, how you can tell it's done is it's nice and golden brown. And see how it's not all stuck together anymore? It's really loose and movable. So, the next step is to let it cool. You want to let this cool completely. Um, once it has cooled, you can add fruit, dried fruit to it or other things. For instance, you could add M&Ms or milk chocolate chips. You could add sweetened um, shredded coconut or flaked coconut. You could add dried cranberries or cherries or raisins. You could chop up some figs or apricots to add to it. And you need about a cup of those. Um, if you wanna put a whole bunch of different things, I wouldn't go over two cups because it'll be too heavy, but um, once you have mixed in your fruits, or whatever accoutrements you're gonna to add to your granola, and it's completely cool, then you're gonna store it in an airtight container. Um, this is the container that I use. It came from Walmart. Um, I think they, uh, I don't remember the name brand, but it's where they have like cereal containers and things. Or you could store it in, um, of course, in ball jars, half gallon bar, ball jars. Um, you don't add a oxygen absorber or a desiccant or silica packet into them uh, because if you add dried fruits and things, it'll remove the moisture from your fruit. So that's how you make peanut butter granola. Um, there's some really great granola recipes and I'm gonna share some more as we go along. For instance, um, a spice granola with cinnamon in it um, and some other things. So I will see you soon in another video. And don't forget, I love you as a pie. Bye.